The painting. Let's do this. Previously on Avatar. How do I look? <laughs> Why is this a part of the, the last time? <laughs> You think? Well, that explains why I can't catch a fish around here. Because normally my fishing skills are off the hook. Get it? Like a fishing hook? Too bad your skills aren't on the hook. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even get that joke. It's just funny because <laughs> I don't know why it's funny. Charisma goes a long way, I guess. Mind if I ask who you are? We're, um... Just fellow hot men. Hot men? Hot men? We're a fishing town. At least that's how it was before the factory moved in. Okay, starting to see where this is going. <laughs> we have to do something to help. These people are starving, but you turn your back on them? We'll be helping them all by taking out the Fire Lord. So they're both understandable and admirable, but there's limitations to both, both of their thinking. Where I think I fall in this argument is I actually agree with Sokka, but maybe not for the reasons that he lists. I think the important thing is to follow your gut and do what you think is right in any given moment and have a code. I also think you got to be really careful trying to solve other people's problems for them. What is the village doing? Why is the village not taking action? We tend to think simplistically. We see a problem and we attribute a cause and we think removing that cause will fix the problem. And sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. But something else to think about is that there are always unseen consequences of big actions like that, especially if there are a lot of variables. We don't know what the net effect will be. Sometimes I think it's better to let things play out organically, locally, rather than, you know, just a powerful figure like coming in and knocking something down in the name of progress. I wish I could help more. Wow, interesting. Look, we only have a few weeks to get to the Fire Lord in time for the invasion and the eclipse, which, by the way, only lasts for eight minutes. Wow, I didn't realize that. We have to wake up early. I'm not waking up That's early. It's not happening. No, I'm with Huff. I think Appa's sick. Oh no. What? Appa's sick? That's Insensitive comment incoming. I might as well just throw our schedule away now. His tongue is perfect. Did he just eat a lot of berries or something like that? Food was delivered to our village by a mysterious and wonderful person, the painted lady. Interesting. Is she a waterbender? Who is it? Is it Zuko? <laughs> Thank you, painted lady. Can you believe how much an entire village can be affected by one lady? I mean, spirit? Well, I hope she returns every night. Otherwise, this place would go right back to the way it was. This episode is really bringing out the savior side of Katara. I guess she wants to be that figure that can heal the sick and protect the weak. The painted lady, I guess, so far in this episode is an embodiment of what she wants to be for these people. I really admire certain elements of Katara, but in some ways I feel like she is the most fundamentally different from me and also a personality type that typically I tend to avoid. One quality I have is I'm very strong-willed and I don't like being told what to do. This is both a strength and a weakness, depending on this, the context. It protects me from things, but also it makes me annoying, <laughs> I guess. And Katara, I think, is someone who sees her will as being good. And so she tries to will herself on situations. And that also is both a good and a bad thing. Like, for example, in the desert, she's like, I'm going to take care of everyone. And she, she did that. But we also saw this as a negative when she was being maybe overly controlling when Toph first joined the group. So I think this thing that's playing out right now is kind of the ultimate exploration of that thing. Because here she is trying to apply herself maternally to an entire village. And she's only just arrived. If you're too compassionate, you end up meddling in affairs that you don't fully understand and you you might make things worse. You're kind of in dangerous territory there. Is she literally trying to be the painted lady? I was just trying to help the village. Let's oh, it literally was the her. <laughs> I'm so stupid. Oh my god. I can't believe I didn't get that. I legit thought the painted lady was real and the guitar was copying her. <laughs> Oops. So much for insightful analysis. Moving on. Is Abba even sick? He might be sick of the purple berries I've been feeding him. I got that right at least. That, he's fine. If you want to help, there's one more thing I have to do. You gotta destroy this factory, right? Man, they don't know what they're doing. Katara, what you did put our whole mission in jeopardy. I mean, that is kind of true. Fire Nation soldiers are heading to the village. What was I supposed to do? Leave. Do nothing. I will never, ever turn my back on people who need me. This is very, very touchy. <laughs> this is a tough one. So first of all, I think maybe it was not her role to meddle. But secondly, since she did meddle, I admire the fact that she's actually seeing it through. Like if you're going to 
actually commit to one of those actions, that means you're sort of responsible for what happens and, and you got to stick around. There's this concept of skin in the game where if you're going to be able to make decisions that affect a lot of people, then you should take part in the results of that somehow. And so I think one of the issues with politics especially is a lot of times people making big changes, they don't actually feel the effects of them. Whatever happens is now kind of on her shoulders. Like if people die because of this, that's on her. And if she manages to help people, then then maybe she actually did some good. But I think it's very difficult to actually get there. I'm coming too. You need me. And I will never turn my back on you. And so for me, that solidifies my siding with Sokka. Because it's easy to frame them as compassionate and pragmatic. But they, they both have a mix of the two. And I think that Sokka's mix just ends up working better. Because he's compassionate for the things that are in his world that he directly knows and understands. And I think that if everybody did that as a goal, instead of looking outside for these big things to fix, that might be a more healthy outlook long term. This is an interesting tactic. <laughs> Scary. I mean, legit car can kill them though, so. I'll take care of you myself. Good luck. Leave this village and never Come back! You're not the painted lady! Oh wow, she got exposed. How dare you act like our painted lady! Whoa! I shouldn't have acted like someone I wasn't, and I shouldn't have tricked you. Your problems are real. You can't wait around for someone to help you. You have Whoa. to help yourself. I'm blown away that they went there. But yeah, I mean, I completely I agree with her. I completely agree. Like, what were they doing? They're just waiting around for some ghost. You must be talking about my brothers, Doc and Shu. No, I just saw you. You switched hats and called yourself a different name. Is there some larger symbol symbolism with the hat thing? Am I overthinking it? One person wearing different hats? Uh, I got nothing. <laughs> this is the kind of help I think that is reasonable. It's like going with it, with the community as they do something for themselves, rather than making like a sudden sweeping action. Oh, it's the painted lady. Thank you. Wow. Great episode for Katara. I feel a little bit conflicted about this idea. There's no avoiding making mistakes and helping people is admirable. I just think the important thing is to really open your eyes to what it is you actually want. What are exactly are your own motivations? Helping others is noble, but I think it's important to know your own limitations and where actually you can be helpful and where you may be overstepping and where helping others actually might be to their detriment, somewhat counterintuitively. But all that being said, I do admire that Katara has those ambitions and even more than that, that she's not just talk like she really stuck it through and when she realized that her choices had created some adverse effects she actually took responsibility for that and, and stood up for it all right that was a great one i love it so much when they're just traveling around it's so cool Sokka's master Sokka gets a master oh Water. master of complaining wow this is amazing to watch eh, you've seen nothing once you've seen it a thousand times kind of pretty close she saw that. Keep an eye on Momo. So what, I'm just a lemur sitter? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll give Sokka a lot of credit. I think that if I live in that world and I'm not a bender, I would not handle that well. <laughs> that would be very difficult. And while Sokka gets made fun of, and it does seem to bother him somewhat, it seems like for the most part, he's, he's not really that emotionally disturbed by it. But I guess this episode is focusing on that very thing. Disgusting old man. Oh, he's playing some kind of game. Cool. I just thought of his quote, right? In the darkest times, hope is something you give yourself. Seems like he is practicing what he preaches, which is nice. I think that's even more amazing than it initially seems. We love Iroh, so it makes sense to us why he still would have a positive spirit. But for Iroh, all he has is himself in a jail cell and nothing else literally. So to be able to keep up your spirits like that and even smile, a testament to his great and enduring character. Boo-hoo, poor heroes. Uh-oh, sulky Sokka. I can't do anything. No one can read a map like you. And who keeps us laughing with sarcastic comments all the time? Look at Katara's hair, right? What's up with that? <laughs> what? What's wrong with my hair? Oh no, he's so bad at it. Each of you is so amazing and I'm not. Duh. I mean, everyone who watches this knows that that's not true. But we all have those moments. It's completely understandable. It's so easy to see other people's positive qualities and miss your own. 
it's amazing how little connection there is between objective qualities you have and your own self-evaluation. It just seems to be almost totally disconnected in ways that are just nonsensical. It's very relatable. I'm sorry you're feeling so down, but I hope you know none of us see you that way. I know something that's gonna make you feel better. Shopping! What do you think? Whoa, I love it. All I need to complete the outfit is a windsword. What's a windsword? Yeah, that would make him a great windbender. <laughs> Does that make you angry when I say windbender? Windbenders, the famous group of wind nomads. Wind sword, you see, I'm not crazy. Wind and air, how the hell am I supposed to keep that straight? It's not like the show is called Avatar The Last Airbender or anything like that. Yeah, nice. I really wanted to keep this outfit though, no lie. No. <laughs> that was basically a montage of my teenage years. I remember my first sword. That's what you needed all along, Sokka. A master. <gasps> yes. Wow, we get an Iroh training montage? That's great. You should know the master turns almost everyone away. He wouldn't be a good master if he didn't. And you think you deserve to learn from the master. Well, actually, I've been all over the world, and I know one thing for sure. I have a lot to learn. Oh. Hey, speaking of emptying your cup. There you go. Let's find out together how worthy you are. I will train you. Nice. Good job, Sokka. And just as the imagination is limitless, so too are the possibilities of the sword. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> How hot is it? I don't know. Real hot? It's so hot, Momo is, is shedding like Appa. Huh? <laughs> huh? You need Sokka back in the group. You don't know how much you appreciate someone till they're gone. Sad truth. Yes. Look at this guy. The first you will learn is calligraphy. You cannot take back a stroke of the brush or a stroke of the sword. Cool lesson. I like that analogy. I actually have a great calligraphy story. When I was 18 or 19, I spent a summer working on a farm in Japan and the host family was nice enough to enroll me in calligraphy classes. The master that I was learning from was so perfect, she could replicate the exact same image on the page. I've always had terrible handwriting, so I was terrible at it and I was making a mess of it and she was criticizing my, my abilities. And I made an excuse that, well, it's because I'm left-handed and it's not fair because calligraphy is made by right-handed people and a lot of strokes go left to right. But her response was to take the brush from me, write a character perfectly, then switch it to her left hand and write the exact same character perfectly. And then she told me not to make excuses and to keep practicing. That was a great lesson for me to learn about excuses and I'll never forget that. Now paint it. Is that okay? <sighs> oh, <Saka. laughs> Concentrate on what you're doing. <laughs> that was cruel. Manipulate them to my advantage. That's pretty good. Hey, would you mind grabbing a cold drink for me? I'll take a slice of lemon in mine, please. Speaking of the last video, this is also a good example of the type of student I was talking about, where they're not really exceptional at the thing that they're learning, but they have other qualities that make the whole process fun, and so you'll you'll go to any lengths to help them. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> I was getting swole. <laughs> crazy old man. Yes. I love how crazy old man becomes a slur that people keep throwing at Iroh, and it's something that he ends up using to his benefit. That's so beautiful. Sometimes you can lean into those things. You may actually enjoy it. It's only when you're afraid that those things actually might be true that those insults hurt you. Like, if Iroh actually was concerned that he's a crazy old man, or he really didn't want other people to think about him as a crazy old man, and then someone called him crazy old man, he'd go nuts. It's the things you haven't accepted about yourself that end up causing you pain when other people expose them. Which is kind of nice, because that creates a solution in itself, where you gotta look at that thing and either embrace it or change it. Either of those two options will help the situation somewhat. You've had a good first day of training. That was one day? Wow. You mess things up in a very special yeah. way. You will make your own sword. Wow. Cool. Sokka's coming! Hey Yay! Gosh, what are you doing? We missed you so much! Say something funny! Funny how? <laughs> <laughs> they missed you or something. I didn't care. What was that I just saw? I'm getting inspired. I'm gonna go do some push-ups after this. Damn! Do you think we can make a sword out of a meteorite? We'll make a sword unlike any other in the world. That is so cool. Oh my god, I want one. When you first arrived. You were so unsure. Yesterday. <laughs> you even seemed down on yourself. 
It wasn't your skills that impressed me. No, it certainly wasn't your skills. <laughs> Creativity, versatility, intelligence. These are the traits that define a great swordsman. And these are the traits that define you. That's beautiful. You are more worthy than any man I have ever trained. Wow. I'm sorry, Master. I'm from the Southern Water Tribe. This is my fight. <laughs> he already knows. <laughs> What? What the heck? He's still a dragon. This is more like a final test than an actual battle. Wow. That was a nice shot. Use your surroundings. Make them fight for you. That's a great lesson even outside of fighting. Part of my natural disposition is to be a little bit of a contrarian, right, counter to the grain. And the reason I think I like that is because I don't want to be swept up in the foolishness of others. But there's an arrogance to both, and I think the correct answer is not one or the other. Using momentum to push you forward in a beneficial way without being subservient to it. I think that's probably a better path. Yes, I know he's just cutting down bamboo. Very resourceful. But also kind of messed up. <laughs> Knowledge of the arts belongs to us all. He's got a little Bruce Lee in him too. What a beautiful episode. The master wanted you to have this. A white lotus. Huh. Oh. Wow. Bravo. I love it. Oh man, these are so good. These master episodes. They always touch me. I love it. <laughs> Alright, that's all. I'll see you next time.